In this lecture, we are going to answer the question, why pursue a career in privacy? And I wanna answer this question with a number of different data points. We're gonna start by talking about the booming demand for privacy professionals, not only in the United States, but worldwide. Particularly in the United States, as you will learn throughout this course, the United States is a patchwork of privacy laws. This patchwork applies not only throughout different sectors, such as healthcare, education, and finance, but even at the state level. Therefore, organizations and companies, not only throughout the United States, but also throughout the world, need to have the in-house expertise necessary to navigate this shifting landscape. Third, data and emerging technologies, forefront amongst all of these, is artificial intelligence. If you've been following the headlines even passively, you've undoubtedly noticed that data is at the center of artificial intelligence, and any good, respectable, and robust AI governance program is going to have knowledgeable privacy professionals embedded within it. Finally, and again, because I really like data, we're going to look at a handful of different surveys that help support all of this. We're going to look at the fact that companies are buying into privacy. And then we're going to look at focusing on America, how average Americans view privacy and the difficulty they have in understanding their rights. We're going to look at falling trust in institutions. And then we're going to take a very high level look at data breaches in the United States over the last 20 years. Starting with the booming demand for privacy professionals, an IAPPEY privacy governance report from December 2023 surveyed over 500 individuals across more than 50 different countries. Amongst its many other insights, this report found that 33% of organizations had grown their privacy teams during that reporting period. So in short, the main takeaway here is that one third of these organizations were hiring privacy professionals, were growing those teams. What this timeline shows us is the number of states throughout the United States that have enacted comprehensive privacy legislation and the years that that legislation comes into effect. As you'll see throughout the course, when I'm referring to individual states, more often than not, I'm using the USPS Postal Code abbreviations. Here's this table. If you go into your search engine of choice and you input USPS abbreviations or USPS state abbreviations, you're going to get this table. By the end of the course, you're likely to memorize a lot of these if you haven't already. So back to this timeline here, we see that in 2023, for example, legislation came into effect in the states of California, Colorado, Connecticut, Utah, and Virginia. In 2024, we have Montana, Texas, and Oregon. In 2025, 2026, we have many more states. All of those together total 19. I'm not going to read through all of them here. We have not included Florida because Florida is not comprehensive in nature. And when we get to domain five and we start talking about these state level statutes, we will define what comprehensive means. Moving forward, there are, by my count at the time of recording, at least 13 other states that have introduced comprehensive privacy legislation. The main takeaway here is that throughout the United States, more than half of states have already enacted comprehensive privacy legislation or are in the process of doing so. Again, the Business obligations throughout these different statutes can be very different. And again, organizations and companies around the world need to understand the obligations that are imposed on their businesses so that they can successfully navigate this terrain. Therefore, having in-house privacy expertise to rely on is very important. This is, this is good job security for our profession. With regards to data and emerging technologies, the first two statistics here refer to the amount of data that is being produced annually. In 2023, it was 64.5 zettabytes. And if you don't know what a zettabyte is, that's fine. I didn't either. I had to look it up. That is a 10 with 21 zeros. That is the amount of data that was being produced annually as of 2023. 
and it's projected that that number will almost triple by 2025. That is a lot of data, undoubtedly an enormous amount of personal data that needs to be protected and regulated. Looking at our day-to-day lives, Internet of Things or IoT has taken off dramatically. We have wearables such as smartwatches, we have smart cars, we have ubiquitous sensors enhancing the capacities of so-called smart cities. And all of these devices are collecting data, processing, and storing that data. And again, a lot of this data is personally identifiable data that needs to be protected and governed appropriately. Finally, nowadays, you can't go anywhere without running into artificial intelligence. It's on our phones, it's on our computers, it's in the cloud, and central to artificial intelligence is data. In fact, if you do a little research and you search up the AI triad, you will see that data is one third of this triad with algorithms and compute being the other two thirds. Everyone is hoovering up data, a lot of it personally identifiable data. And again, this is data that needs to be protected, it needs to be governed, it needs to be regulated. And in order to do all of that appropriately and lawfully, we need experienced, knowledgeable privacy professionals. More data that I want to throw at you. According to a 2024 Cisco privacy benchmark study, of the companies surveyed, companies recognized the following. 94% of companies said that customers would not buy from them if their data was not properly protected. 98% of these companies surveyed reported that external privacy certifications were very important when choosing a vendor. And so in this case, we have a company that needs privacy consultants. They find a privacy consulting organization, bring those folks in. And when these organizations are vetting different vendors, they're looking for those that have privacy certifications, such as the IAPP certifications. Finally, 97% of these organizations said that they had a responsibility to use data ethically. And as we'll see towards the end of domain one, data ethics is very important. I want to continue looking at some more studies here. We're going to look at how Americans view data privacy. We're going to look at trust in institutions. And then we're going to look at the number of data breaches in America over the last 20 plus years. The study that we're looking at here is titled How Americans View Data Privacy. It was published in October of 2023. We're not going to go over the whole report. I just want to focus on a few little parts here. Looking at this one right here, we see that Americans are largely concerned and confused about how their data is being used. Of the number of respondents, 81% of adults said that they are concerned about how companies use the data they collect about them. Similarly, 71% of U.S. adults said they are concerned about how the government collects and uses data about them. Additionally, 67% of adults said they have little to no understanding about what companies do with the data they collect. And 77% of adults said the same thing concerning the government. Again, they have little to no understanding about what the government does with the data that the government collects. The main takeaway here and the reason I bring this up is because it's very clear that average Americans are not only concerned about the data that's being collected on them, but they also have little to no understanding about perhaps why that data is being collected, how it's being collected, how it's being processed, and how it's being protected. In a nutshell, that's the responsibility of a privacy professional. What are you collecting? Why are you collecting it? How are you processing it? How are you protecting it? What are my rights? And so, again, we see that there's not only a demand throughout both public and private sectors for experienced, knowledgeable privacy professionals, but there's clearly a huge demand amongst average Americans to better understand this as well. Another study that I want to share with you comes from the Annenberg School of Communications out of the University of Pennsylvania. Now, we're not going to look at this study in depth. Of course, you can go to your search engine of choice, you can punch this in, and you can read the full report if you'd like to. What I want to focus on is just the title and the subtitle here because I believe this says it all. Americans can't consent to companies' use of their data. They admit they don't understand it, say they're helpless to control it, and believe they're harmed when firms use their data, making what companies do illegitimate. Again, this supports the Pew Research study that we were just looking at. 
Americans are interested, but they feel completely helpless. So again, there's a strong demand amongst the public to understand how our data is being collected, why it's being collected, why it's being processed, how it's being protected, and what our rights are. The next study that I want to share with you comes from Gallup, and this concerns the historically low faith or trust in U.S. institutions. This was published in July of 2023. And what I'd like to focus on is this table right here, recent trend in Americans' confidence in institutions. And the bars that you see here correspond to the deal of confidence that Americans have in each of these institutions. And so we can see, for example, that trust and confidence is high in small business, the military and police, for example, those are the top three. But it is very low in Congress, big business, TV, etc. As a privacy professional, I consider one of my major responsibilities to be a good custodian of other people's data. Those other people include my colleagues and the American public. As a privacy professional at your organization, you should consider one of your major responsibilities to be the same, to protect the personally identifiable information of your colleagues and your customers, whether those are members of the American public or fellow humans throughout the world. And part of being a good custodian is understanding that individuals have trust in us. And by protecting their data, by being transparent and accountable, we are hopefully increasing trust in our organization. And perhaps this is me just being a little Pollyannish, but I believe by helping to increase transparency, accountability, and trust in my organization, I can help increase trust in other institutions as well which is really important for our society. The last data point that I want to share with you comes from privacyrights.org, and this is a data breach chronology beginning in January of 2002, going all the way until the end of September 2023. And so the numbers that you see here, this timeline, this is not current. But what you see here is during this approximately 20-year period, More than 10 billion individuals were impacted by unique breaches. I know that recently there have been more catastrophic high-profile breaches, and so undoubtedly this number is much higher. But it goes to show the extent of the damage that has been done to Americans' personal data. And clearly, again, there's a tremendous demand for individuals who understand privacy, who understand appropriate safeguards and who can help to build and maintain trust in our organization. In this lecture, we have discussed why you should pursue a career in privacy, and there are a number of different reasons. As we saw, demand is booming. In 2023, one-third of organizations surveyed by the IAPP EY report reported growing their privacy teams. In the United States, Half of the United States have either signed into law or introduced comprehensive privacy legislation. This has created a very cumbersome landscape for organizations to navigate. Therefore, they need that experienced, knowledgeable in-house expertise to help them comply with these laws. We talked about the role of emerging technology, such as big data, Internet of Things, and artificial intelligence. We then looked at a handful of studies, such as the Cisco Benchmark Study, We looked at surveys from Pew and Gallup, and we also looked at the number of data breaches over the last 20 years. Hopefully, this paints for you a very vivid picture. The demand for privacy professionals is booming, and now is a really great time to get into the profession.